little bit crooked today, sorry. I just got distracted with two or three things going on here. Where are they going? There's an amazing little chase going on here with these Egyptian geese. Maybe it was another bird, but they all went and mobilized <laughs> after the bird. I don't know what was going on here. Let's go down and check how they're doing. Maybe it was some uh, bird of prey. But they all got excited and they took off an amazing movement. Guys, I have to make a little confession to you all that um, these mornings, sometimes I'm not getting the sunrise at the first moment and we're sharing it with other people because I'm sacrificing you. I think you'll understand and be kind and generous. There's some people doing a movie and they want footage of the sunrise here at the Sea of Galilee. So that's what I'm doing at your expense. People really love uh, the Sea of Galilee and they feel deeply connected and different people have different projects or different needs. So just helping out there. Considering your gracious generosity. We have our famous Magdala citizen, Mary of Magdala this morning in John's account of the resurrection and all the trepidation of these women as they arrived to the tomb. And, and then we have a huge contrast in the attitudes of the cowardly, once cowardly, understandably, humanly cowardly Peter and to see what he's doing now and how he's addressing the entire people and the impact of this address is just way beyond catching a couple of fish at the Sea of Galilee. The transformation that the resurrection brings about, the transformation that the interior joy absolute sheer joy that they have experienced. <clears throat> the transformation of their just absolutely incredible experience, you know, incredible, unbelievable. And it really happened. So you, you kind of don't want to believe it or you say that, you know, you're crazy. Uh, it didn't happen. It couldn't happen like this. Good there, little, uh, there we go. Give us some more of those feathers here for our live stream viewers. Gosh, they're very homey now. We're here, right here beside them. I'm less than three feet away from this one here, maybe. Actually, the camera's about two feet right above her, or him. I don't know which one is him and which one is her. So they, there's, a, there's an extraordinary transformation. You know, we just need to, to tap in there. I'd like my life transformed. I've been very, very blessed by the grace of faith and hope and love since I was a child. That's the family I was born into, family of uh, people who believed, for whom God was very real. And I was blessed to receive that gift. Got another little surprise coming for you here right now, if they'll still be there when I get there. I just saw them crawling up here on the sand. And there's a little fresh water here, a different water. This is 
is a catfish struggling to get in over these shells. And there's another one coming right behind him there. If they only knew they were being watched all over the world. Well, this guy probably realized and he figured maybe it's safer to get back in the water. But you got three of them up here. It's amazing how they know there's water there and then they, they come over this mound of, of shells to come in. Now that guy has disappeared into invisibility. And these three are here. They're really locked in here now. They're totally, totally exposed to my goodwill. Since they can't move too much now, we can get down closer here so you can. I don't know if they bite or if they attack, if they feel an aggressor is coming close. It looks like they finished a plastic container of something and just left it there. I wonder what happens if we touch the tail. Do you want to see? They're acting dead. I say one of the best ways if there's enemies around is don't show too much life. <laughs> Act dead. <laughs> this is the first time I did this to a catfish. <laughs> Somebody must have done some mighty sharing yesterday because normally the, the Facebook goes up to about six, seven hundred and now it went up to over three thousand. I noticed, I just happened to notice my eye caught it and I couldn't believe it. So, some of you guys were doing some decent sharing, or somebody I don't know for some reason got a hold of it and made it known to others. It's amazing, often I think about that, you know, like Jesus had, or Peter, when he did the baptism, he had 3,000 people got baptized in the reading today. 3,000, you know? And over 3,000 saw this video yesterday. It's kind of a nice little coincidence, isn't it? But it all depends on people noticing and bringing it to the attention of their friends and then others see it. There's so much stuff out there. So many good things as well, so many great commentaries that are more, let's say, formal and professional. Oh, I just saw the plane. Look up here, these war planes, it's amazing, you know? How much we need peace. You can see it up there. Let me see if I can catch it for you. It's just over that tree right now, there. They were very loud this morning and last night. It's such a, a sad thing that we human beings on this planet are so engaged in fighting. Amazing, amazing. And it happens in the kitchen between siblings, between spouses. Imagine Herod's palace in Tiberias. You know, it's a world we live in and we just need the peace. We need a transformation. We need a transformation of the resurrection the transformation of hearts. It's not about... wealth, and it's not a, I mean, maybe Mary Magdalene was very wealthy, there's that very strong theory, but she's also very fearful on the morning of the resurrection, and she's also very sad, very broken. You know, it's... It's not about money, it's not about power. I mean, they felt hopefully powerless because the entire religious establishment were against them and the entire Roman Empire was against them. Pilate had just taken out Jesus in the most brutal way. And the conniving was incredibly intense. The hostility, it was building up for a long time and they're processing all of this. And in this incredible sadness to to be taken totally by surprise by the resurrection. And in a way, that's our world today. There's so much conniving, so much fake news, so much power, so much disaster, so much destruction. You know, the, the resurrection isn't just a pious exercise for us to contemplate at Easter. Wish it, uh, it's transforming. And again, 
we can't go out and preach to the world because the world doesn't want to listen. You know, it's that time when in the gospel, in the, in the Bible, there were no prophets. And it says that the word of prophecy was taken because of the hardness of hearts. And then some hearts suffered a lot. Imagine to have seven demons expelled, you know, real big issues. Some hearts suffered so much and they were opened up for the message of Christ, for the message of the resurrection of reconciliation. How much suffering do we need? Does it take for our world to learn, for our world to, to, to be ready? And then you have Peter and he wants to take out his sword in Gethsemane and cut off the ear of the high priest servant, Malchus. You see, we're dealing with facts, we're dealing with history, we're dealing with experience that these people had. So one thing people do that are afraid, they sometimes act aggressively. It's a very animal-like thing to do. And, and it happens all of us when we're afraid, when we're under accusation, we can get verbally very violent, we can get very restless, we can lose our peace definitely lose our joy we couldn't have any joy we we're so afraid we we're so scared we we're so broken we we're so hurt we we're so offended and this is the transformation that we see documented today in the two readings the joy of Mary Magdalene and meeting Jesus you should read that text yourself it's just so so brilliant She was outside the tomb weeping. I mean, you know families like that. Somebody has died, a child, a very dear spouse. It's interesting how, you know, one of my sisters told me that my dad, God rest his soul, um, my mom passed away in 97 in August, August the 4th, and then by a good stroke of inspiration and, and providence, I had been I was working in Germany at the time, and we got my dad to commit to come to Germany in the following uh, early summer. It happened to be in May that it came to, to be. And, you know, it was amazing that he did it. He had no expectation that he would do it. And he would kind of resist, no, no, you're crazy. That's not possible and everything. And then he... Um, he did come, and then the, uh, the September after that, or four or five months later, the same sister said to me, you know, uh, from August until May, Daddy was always centered on, on the graveyard, Glen Column Kill. His mind was always there, where Mammy was laid to rest. And they had been 43 years married. I often say that my parents broke up after 43 years. My mom left him. It took him five more years to follow. And those are very five very special years. But then my sister said to me, the trip to Germany completely took him out of the sadness and he's only talking about Germany now. He needed something at a certain point. You people have to mourn that Mary Magdalene is at the tomb weeping is the most normal, natural, human, real thing you could imagine. And as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord. And I don't know where they put him. And then I won't tell you the rest of the story. I think you know it. You have to read it. Take it out and read it. The link is going to be there when this gets posted. So uh, enjoy it. Just, just enjoy it. Just spend time. You know her Magdala now. We're walking along here. All where we're walking right now is part of the old Magdala. <coughs> she 
She knew this lake line. She knew these hills over there. This is real people, you know. The resurrection is about real people having a real experience. We can't go back and film the experience now, but all the experiences we know, like I was never in Australia and I know Australia is there. Why? I believe it. I can't, I can't go there and feel it with my hands. I could go, but I, I, I'm not going. I, I, it's enough for me that they tell me, and it's really, I believe that they're not fooling me. It's not fake news. Most of our knowledge is based on the trust in others who tell us. I mean, the knowledge about nuclear physics. Have you ever been inside an atom? You know, the knowledge about so many things, medicine, uh, all, all the, all we learn, we learn by faith. We trust good teachers. We trust our parents. That's the way humans work. And our knowledge of the resurrection is real. And it's about a real fact that was relayed to us by people who wanted our good. And that's what Peter, <laughs> just listen to Peter today. Listen to him and his talk at Pentecost. Okay, he's 50 days after the resurrection, so he has about two months had time to process what's going on. But listen to the power and the conviction, the, the clarity, the, the interior power. This is not a power of, of weapons. I mean, they could crucify him right there. And James was killed a few years later. James the Apostle over here from Bethsaida as well, you know, the same guys. They were all martyred. And they knew they were in real big, like the probability was huge to be martyred. It's just amazing the transformation. How is your transformation coming along? We can all be at different places. We might be at the tomb weeping. We might be fearful. We might be broken. We might have denied Jesus. We might have left the church. We might have never read the gospel for years. We might have gone to confession for a long time, like not since my first confession. We might be in a real bad row with the spouse. You know, it could be anything. It doesn't matter where you are in the process. The important thing is you're in the process and you might be resisting it totally right now, resisting the desire and the will to reconcile with enemies, real enemies and serious enemies. And you might have some people in the family pushing for wiping them out, taking them out, hiring somebody making an alliance with somebody stronger and paying them so much money to get all this equipment to deal with them. We can be at different places on the map. It doesn't matter, we're in the process and the Lord will come knocking on our door one day, ever so quietly, ever so humbly, ever so kindly, ever so goodly, and he will open up a whole new vista for us. And we will humbly bow and we will say glory to God in the highest. And we will be filled with joy. And this joy will be yours and nobody can take it away. People, God bless you. See you later, alligators. Great to be here with you. At the Sea of Galilee, the plains are overhead again. Let's pray for our world. That's one thing we can do. No prayer is ever wasted. Let's pray with faith. Let's not pray with anger. Let's pray with humility. Let's pray with compassion. We were also there in situations of difficulty. We need grace too, and we can pray for people. And the prayer is very good. Prayer works. God bless you. And also, you know what really works? To reconcile at home, then our prayer for reconciliation of others will be more powerful. The Lord will be changing the world.